Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Recently, I received an email from someone telling me how much they appreciated the video series I did where I processed an image that was shot in very harsh light in multiple different applications. I did it in On One Photo Raw 2019. I did it in Lightroom, Capture One, and uh, several others. They mentioned to me that most of the photography teachers, and including me, uh, will often process our best images. And we don't really show how to process an image that isn't quite perfect. Well, what I'm going to do in this video is process a series of images that were shot in very harsh light. I received another email from someone else asking me to do more on One Photo Raw 2019 videos. So I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to process a series of four images that were shot in very poor light and I'm going to create a panorama in On One Photo Raw 2019, but there's more. In the description below this video, you'll find a link to my website. You'll be able to download these images for free. They're raw files. You could download them for free. And I challenge you to process these images using whatever software you'd like. Then post them to Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. I'm at Anthony Morganti, and I'll have a link for my Instagram in the description below this video as well. And tag me on the image. And I will then share it in my Instagram story. So you could, you know, maybe get some more followers to your Instagram as well. So we're going to start processing these images. It was just like very, you know, sunny, you know, day, very bad light. And I have this series of four images. And you can see that light is really harsh, uh, lots of shadows. And we're going to do our best to make this acceptable. So I'm gonna start with this image here and I'm gonna to go to the edit panel and I'm going to jump right to tone and color. And then I'm going to, uh, the shadows are really dark, so I jump right to that. I'm gonna open up the shadows. You can see there, that's a pretty good example of how bad and harsh the light was. And it's very specular light too, which is kind of a pain in the neck. So I'm going to bring the highlights down I think I'll bring the mid-tones down a little bit as well. Also, that water is really green. We're going to deal with that after I create the panorama, I believe. I'm going to get a white point. I'm going to hold the J key in and then push white to the right. You can see right away I'm clipping those clouds up there. So I'm going to pull that down a little bit. I'm going to pull haze to the left a little bit. It was a little hazy, as you could see. So right about there, I think, is good. Um, I'm not going to add any structure or anything like that. I am going to add a touch of saturation, maybe to 10. And I'm not going to add any contrast. I'm going to do that all to the, uh, as far as contrast structure, things like that. I'm going to do to our resultant panoramic image once I create it. So um, I'm going to go to details and I'm just going to turn those off. You. Those who have watched my videos know that I prefer to do sharpening and noise reduction in the effects uh, uh, tab instead of here in the develop tab. Uh, it found my lens fine, so that's good. So that's my processing for this image. Now I'm not going to go through and by hand process the other image. Instead, what I'm going other images. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be on this processed image. I'm going to go up to settings and I'm going to go down to copy settings. You can see that the shortcut is shift command C for a Mac. It's shift control C for a PC. So I'm going to copy those settings. Next, I'm going to click on the next image that is not processed. And then I'm going to hold in the shift key and click on the last image that is not processed. So you can see down here in the film strip, all three non processed images are selected. Then I'm going to go up to settings and I'm going to go down to paste settings. So what it will do now, it will paste those adjustments from the develop tab on those three images. And I'm going to click apply. So just give it a second to do that. And you can see it did it on this image. And you can see the adjustments are on this image. Let it render, it takes a second. 
And then the adjustments are on this image as well. And we'll let that render. It kind of looks horrendous until it renders. But you can see that the water is really green. Um, the, the Still, the light was really, really harsh. So what we're going to do now is create the panorama. I'm going to click on the Browse panel. I'm going to select all the images. I'm clicked on the first one in the film strip. I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on the last one. So all four images are selected. Then I'm going to go up to the right hand side where it says panel and click on that. And what it will do is it's going to create a preview of the panorama. And I have done a video using on one photo raw 2019 to create a panorama. And I went into more detail than I will in this video on all the intricacies of this preview uh, dialog box that will pop up. So I refer you to that video. A little flag will pop up over here on the right hand side uh, with a link to that video if you're interested in watching it. Okay, our Create Panorama dialog box popped up and you can see there's our panorama here and the options I was talking about are right here. I went over these in great detail in a previous video. I'm going to accept, accept the default options for this demonstration. So I'm just going to click Save. After I do that, now on one is going to create the actual file, the actual panoramic file, and it will then open that image so we could then work on it further. All right, on one flawlessly created our panoramic image. You can see it looks pretty good as far as creating the image, but the light was really bad, and we got to try to dress this up a little bit. Of course, and that water is really green, and I think I'm going to deal with that first. I'm in the effects module, and I'm going to go to add filter, and I'm going to go to uh, the color adjustment filter. And I'm going to jump right over to green on this little tab here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull saturation down and I'm going to bring brightness up a little bit and I'll mess with the U a little bit more towards the right. And just now, by the way, I'm just looking at the water. I really don't care what it does to the trees or the grass because I plan on using a mask. So, um, yeah, it looks better. Like there's, look at the water. There's before and there's after, particularly in these shadows, before and after. So it, it reduced the green touch. I'd like to reduce it even more. But that looks pretty good. So I'm going to put a mask on this now. So I'm going to click on the little mask icon right here. I'm going to invert it by clicking on invert. And then I have a brush. I have a paint in mode. I want to paint in the adjustment. And I'm going to keep feathering at 50 and opacity at 100. I'm going to get a little larger brush just to go a little quicker. Use the right bracket key. And I'm just going to paint along here and just paint in the effect. Now I'm kind of being really sloppy, but I'm sure um, when you do it or if you do this, uh, you'd go a lot slower and more, care you know, more carefully uh, draw it in. I'm going to look, take a look at where I painted by clicking there. You can see. Make sure we get all that water accounted for. I could go then to paint out mode and come in here and fix where I kind of went over the lines a little bit. And in here maybe just a little bit. And go back to paint in mode. Kind of take care of that a little better. Come back here and turn the mask off. And now let's look at before after. There's before and there's after. So you could see it took a lot of the green, especially in the shadows uh, where the reflections of the trees are. And I think that looks a little better. So I'm going to go to add filter again. And I'm going to again go to the color adjustment filter. So that's kind of the great thing about on one. You could add more than one filter so I could stack them. So with this, I want to affect blue. And I'm going to bring the blue sky down and or up in saturation, I'm sorry, and down in brightness a little bit. I'll move the range around, see how that does anything, not really. I think that looks a little better. So we're coming along. I'm going to go to add filter and I'm going to put a tone enhancer on here now. And with the tone enhancer, I'm going to add a bit of contrast now. 
but I still, the shadows are still way dark in there. Let me reset that by double clicking on the word shadows and go to blacks and see if I open up blacks a little. Kind of made it look hazy, didn't it? I really don't like that. So we'll go back to reset blacks. Open up the shadows there a little more. Bring in those highlights a little more. It's a really tough image, really difficult to do. And I think that looks okay. All right. Um, so we'll go to one more. Let me see what the sunshine filter might look, look like. Go strong. Kind of makes it, gives it more of a summery feel. Normally, I don't like any glow. I don't like any of the glow settings on the sunshine filter. It has two. It has sun glow. And then it has just glow. But to tell you the truth, I kind of like that a little bit for this image. I think that kind of looks nice. I'm going to go to the Add Filter, and I'm going to go to Dynamic Contrast. Now, right out of the box, I think that's a little too strong. So I'm just going to pull the Opacity down to maybe 35 before or after. There's really no noise in this image because it was um, shot at ISO 64. So I don't think that's oops, I don't think that's an issue at all. So yeah, there's no noise at all. So I'm not really even worried about that. Um, so uh, right now, I don't know. It's kind of still a little bright up in here. Uh, maybe I want to try to mess with that. That's going to be difficult though. Um, if I go to the tone enhancer and I bring exposure down a little bit, but then I get a mask and I then invert the mask, and then I go to my opacity of my brush and bring it down to maybe 20-ish. And I'm gonna put feathering all the way up to 100, and I get a little bit of a bigger brush, and I come in here like this. And I try to just even that out a little bit. You can see how it's not working that super well I kind of kind of got a line in here see I got these lines I'm doing now see that's why it's so difficult to do this so I'm going to undo that command Z command Z and get a nice big one kind of just get it in there a little better the transition zone's the tough area to do. I think that looks a little better. It still might be a little bright up in the air. I'm going to put a vignette on it. I'm going to undo that last stroke, hit, last stroke, hit Command Z again. Probably shouldn't have did that, but we'll leave it uh, just for the sake of argument. Go back to the view mode. And finally, I think I'll just finish up and put a vignette on it. And let's see what Big Softy looks like. Go with Strong. I'm going to pull it off a little bit. Alternatively, I could have bright brightened up the corner over here and then uniformly darkened everything. That hindsight being 2020, that's probably what I should have done. Instead of trying to darken the middle part by itself, I should have tried to brighten up this part and maybe over here a little bit, and then used another filter, another tone enhancer filter, to kind of darken all that down a little bit. But this is what I'm going to ride with. It's not, uh, it's not very good by any means, but really my challenge is to you. Uh, again, the, uh, below this video will be a link to my website. You'll be able to download these images for free. I'd like you to process them with any application you'd like, uh, upload them, on Instagram, follow me and tag me on the photo, and then I will share that photo in an Instagram story. Let me know too what software you used to process the image, and I'll have that on the uh, Instagram story as well. So that's it. Uh, thank you uh, to Jerry who suggested that I process more images that are difficult to process, and thank you to Tom who asked me to do more On One Photo Raw 2019 videos. So, and of course, thank you to everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>